Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about understanding the female anatomy of the bovine and understanding uh, the parts and the importance of each of those parts. As we talk about these body parts, it's important to know the role and the function of each of these as they all facilitate and assist with uh, high, high fertility. Um, conversely, if we don't let each body part do its job, it can impact fertility in a negative way. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first body part we're going to talk about is the vulva. It's really the only external uh, body part that we can see. The vulva is really there and designed more than anything to uh, facilitate sanitation. It's there for protection. The reproductive tract is really designed primarily as a one-way passage. Uh, and so again, we just need to allow the vulva to do its job and to make sure it does protect and keep everything uh, sanitary uh, and we're not dragging contaminants into the rest of the reproductive tract. The next body part that we're gonna focus on here is the vaginal canal or the vagina. In artificial insemination, this body part doesn't have too much of a primary purpose. Uh, of course, it is the primary body part that's involved with natural uh, reproduction. So if we were using a herd bull, this is where most of the uh, reproduction is gonna take place with the bull inserting and depositing semen in this area. Again, with AI, we're really just bypassing down this vaginal canal. As we get to the next body part, we'll focus and talk here around the cervix. The cervix really is the primary landmark when we're uh, looking to action artificial insemination. The cervix is really designed to act as a filter, again, to uh, facilitate that one-way passage, if you will. It opens up and dilates at certain parts of estrus and gestation. Uh, and then also, of course, just by design, you can kind of see <clears throat> it's naturally set up uh, for that one-way passage as we talked about. Just in front of the cervix, we then get into the first part of the uterus. And we're gonna really split the uterus into two different areas. The first, we're gonna to refer to as the uterine body. The primary importance for this, for the point of uh, artificial insemination, is this is the site of semen deposition. Simply put, this is where we want you to deposit the semen when you breed an animal. From there, we get splits and pairs of the remaining body parts. So the next part of the uterus here you can see is the uterine horn. The uterine horn is really there to act as a housing unit. If we're successful, this is where the fetus and the, the calf will develop, give or take nine months when successful. You'll also notice most of these terms are very similar to human anatomy with only a few exceptions, one of those being the next body part here. In cattle, we refer to it as the oviduct. In humans, we would call this the fallopian tube. The oviduct is the general area uh, uh, that's a term that describes the site of fertilization. There are some more specific body parts inside of the oviduct that we'll focus on here in this next slide. The last body part that we're gonna talk about uh, on this slide is the ovary. Again, similar to human anatomy, the ovary is really there and designed to cycle off follicles, give or take every 21 days until that animal were to conceive. Just like with humans, it's not really producing uh, more follicles or eggs. Uh, just like with human, they're born with a predetermined number. So it's really there just to release and cycle those off uh, until we were to make a conception again about every 21 days in cattle. As we jump to the next slide here, we're gonna just finish up on these last remaining body parts. So all we did is zoom in on that oviduct area. So if you were to breed an animal, eventually the sperm get down here inside the oviduct and they encounter this first body part inside of the oviduct called the UTJ or the uterine tubular junction. Simply put, it's a narrow passage that helps to try to facilitate normal sperm cells continuing on. Uh, it's a little bit of a selection process, if you will, of trying to weed off any sperm abnormalities uh, from being the ones that would fertilize. Any sperm that would meet and uh, get through that barrier then enter, enter into this next body part down here on the bottom uh, that we refer to as the isthmus. An important hormonal process takes place here at this time. 
That process is really referred to as capacitation. We'll talk about that in a next feature as we learn more about hormones. Once sperm would uh, pass through the isthmus, capacitation would have taken place. Then they're gonna continue upwards into this area here referred to as the ampulla. The ampulla is the specific site of fertilization. So when we receive a conception and when we're successful, sperm and egg are gonna meet up here. The last part, body part that we're gonna focus on here today in this video is this big long word here uh, called the infundibulum. Really the infundibulum is really just designed to uh, interact with the ovary. It's meant to make sure it captures uh, when ovulation occurs and we get the release of those follicles just to make sure it transports that egg down into the ampulla uh, for a chance of high fertility. That's all we have today while we're learning about the body parts. Thank you very much.